and I would like to introduce uh, Shafali Shori, um, who is an assistant professor at the Alice Lee Centre for Nursing Studies in the National University of Singapore, and her research areas focus on family and women health. And she's going to talk about a bit of mobile technology, which is definitely my thing. So I'm really looking forward to this um, presentation. Over to you, Shafali. Thank you so much, Linda. Once again, my heartfelt welcome to each and every one of you. It's really, really honoring to see so many of you joining us today on a Saturday. For me, it's an afternoon and some of you are even almost midnight and, uh, you know, 5 p.m. It's Saturday evening. You are listening to the presentation today. I'm really, really very happy that all of us are so excited about our profession and uh, we are here to learn more. So I'm going to share with you my venture on the mobile health app, which I uh, developed. And the name of my presentation today is Designing, Developing and Testing the home but not alone mobile health app for new parents in the early postpartum period. And uh, before I start, uh, you can keep on uh, coming, uh, bringing in your questions by writing it them on the side. Along the way, I will try to read and uh, answer. If not, at the end of the session, please feel free to ask any questions. I'm also going to leave my email address and I'm also going to share with you my publications. This study has already been published. In fact, I'm on a follow-up study from this study and uh, please uh, feel free to read. And if you have any questions, if you have any interest in this study, I would be more than happy to share. And uh, Linda, being my facilitator, please uh, chip in because you have uh, lots and lots of experience and uh, share with me if you have any thoughts and how do you think along the way. Yeah. Without further ado, I would like to start my presentation today. Like I said, I'm from Singapore and I would like to welcome you all. My presentation is not moving. Linda, I can't see the arrows and my presentation is, oh, okay, I got that. Okay. All right. So welcome from Singapore. This is, uh, this here is a Malayan. Malayan is our symbol in Singapore. To sh uh, it's a city of lion and the lion is our symbol. So basically, uh, we want to associate or rather we are, uh, we associate Singapore uh, as a lion city. Uh, something, someone, something, the people here, we believe in uh, self strength and we believe in uh, working hard in our life. And uh, it's, a, it's a city country and it's a very small, uh, we also known as uh, red dot on the on the globe because uh, our we literally we are a dot on uh, on the entire globe because it's so small and uh, in fact uh, in half an hour you can uh, with in car if you're not stuck in a jam you can move from one end of the uh, of the of, of singapore to the other end and this particular uh, picture is actually a skyline which is a very popular area and people uh, like to come to singapore to visit our attractions and uh, some of them are like our island sentosa we have a water park we have uh, our um, uh, garden by the bay which is uh, concrete it is actually a garden, but it's made up of cement and we have artificial flowers and all. This is something to for you all to look forward to come and see. And please, like I said, I mean it. Uh, you're most welcome to visit Singapore and please write to me and I would be very happy to, to welcome you all. So this is the layout of my presentation. I'll be sharing with you the introduction all the way to discussion. And uh, if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to ask. So basically, I'm going to start with uh, about my focus is on a postpartum period. Being a midwife, I worked in a hospital and uh, I deliver babies. And then I realized after my stint, after in delivery suite, I worked for a while in a postpartum ward. And I realized that uh, something unique to Singapore, which I would like to share with you all, which could be something um, strange to many of you, that we do not have uh, continuity of care in the form of community nurses or midwives visiting women at home after they give birth in the hospital. 100% births are in the hospital. We do not have any birth centers. Home births are not allowed. And after women give birth in a hospital, she stays there with, between 24 hours to 36 hours, depending upon the type of delivery. Of course, it's a normal delivery. Some women, even less than 24 hours, they go home. And we have scarcity of baits like anywhere. So that's why early discharges are very much common commonly seen in Singapore and sadly once the women they go home the only kind of follow-up care they have is they will come back to see their obstetrician or a baby's doctor within a week if it is a cesarean birth or a month 
which is uh, for normal delivery mothers. And anecdotally, from my experience, many mothers default their follow-up appointment, especially the mothers who have given birth normal vaginal delivery by one month time. They're kind of more or less okay, and they don't come back and see the doctors. So we do not know how these mothers are doing, and we have no follow-up, like I said earlier, by any midwife visiting them at home or whatsoever. And uh, that was something very strange because I got a chance to actually visit Melbourne. And I know Nordic countries, even UK, you have this uh, uh, follow-up care by the community nurses, very, very, um, I would say, established. And uh, you are supporting the parents, I personally feel, very well. So I felt that that is something which is missing in Singapore. And that's how I started working on uh, uh, this research to begin with as early as in 2011. And I actually developed a, a program where I started giving and doing home visits in Singapore. Now, which was very, very successful research-wise. I have published that. And uh, personally, I felt so fulfilled because I saw happy faces and mothers were actually coming, parents were actually coming and thanking me. However, I didn't get much support from uh, from uh, from the hospitals because, uh, uh, rightly, it is uh, not easy to send midwives to each and every women's home because logistically it's quite stressful. And we were looking for the options that how we can sustain that helpful program and uh, still can reach to the women and support them. And that's where the idea of this mobile health app came in. So this is a bit of a story about how this project came along. So now, uh, literature-wise, we found out both locally and internationally that postpartum period is a stressful period for new parents. They face a lot of challenges and it's not only just for those who are first-time parents or the mothers, primary parents, it is also for those uh, 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 those who have given birth before and this has resulted in them feeling stressed out and even depression so the further on i did uh, this was based on uh, international research then i did like i said the home visits research and uh, we found out from both mothers and fathers that they feel a lot more stressed out in the early postpartum period uh, something unique to Asian society, we have this thing called doing the month or in a very other layman term, we use the word kind of confinement practice. In that uh, one month postpartum, these women will be staying at home and they are not allowed to take shower, they have to eat certain things, they can't leave the house, so and so forth. So we used to think that these confinement practices actually support women in the postpartum period. But that as we are doing more research and hearing more women, and in fact, me, myself as a mother, we realized that, uh, yes, there's some sort of a support. However, confinement period can be even a source of added stress for us. Reason being, we have sometimes intrusive in laws. We have some intrusive, I would say, uh, rituals have to follow, which like example, like we were talking about weather in Singapore. Imagine in 36, 37, 38 temperature, you're not allowed to take shower for one month. I hope you can relate. Yeah, I remember uh, Megan, she's from Alaska. Just imagine, Megan, that uh, we have a temperature of 36 and 38 and we can't, uh, we are not allowed to take shower. So with all these things, we have a lot of stress and we also have so-called uh, miscommunication sometimes with our parents and all that because somehow many of them have not breastfeed in the past. And, uh, and, and yes, Megan, it's not fun at all. And uh, that's why it can cause a lot of stress and uh, miscommunication among uh, new parents and uh, the elderly in the house. So these negative uh, emotions can all lead to uh, postnatal depression and that has been shown in the literature. So that's why uh, I wanted to focus on something which can enhance parents' confidence. In a very layman, we use the word confidence, but uh, in literature, I follow this Bandura self-efficacy theory, which means a cognitive process by which one feels that uh, uh, that, that how they can perform a particular task. Like what Portria is saying that, uh, why don't shower for a month? Portria, since you asked this question, just to let you know that we are not allowed to take shower because culturally the belief is that that uh, after giving birth, as women pushes, her so-called bones and the body opens up and the waters can seep. In. I know it's funny, but that's exactly we've been told that the water can enter the bones and you will have aches throughout your life and you won't be able to you know look after your child well and you will be 
uh, a sick mother basically yeah but i know there's no research evidence for that and uh, like i said self-efficacy is a cognitive process which will be able to evaluate the ability towards the performance of a uh, given task and uh, locally from my previous research we have found that self-efficacy is associated with social support and postnatal depression and that's why i come up with the theoretical framework which was depression social support and psc which is parenting self-efficacy they are interrelated and we have to take care of each and every one of them so that eventually we can focus in enhancing parenting satisfaction i can understand culture shock portrayal there's many more things i can share with you yes it's culture that's that's the reason of having today's session isn't it we are so diverse we are but we are all connected being uh, from same profession a midwife and honestly even in singapore we are a multiracial society like i'm indian we have chinese we have uh, malays and all of us have different different rituals to follow so yeah it can be culturally shocking i can understand Literature has shown that a recent randomized control trial, which was done by me in Singapore, that parenting self-efficacy, social support, and depression, they are interrelated. And we found out that, yes, that program was successful, but it was not easy to reach to all the parents because of logistics reason. And we also do some interviews from the parents and ask them, what could be the alternate? What would, what, I mean, of course, they all prefer home visits, but when we ask them, what could be the next best approach? And then they all say that the online resources could be an next best approach, which they would like to um, uh, like to access to get some support. And that's where the idea of this mobile health app uh, came about. And uh, and uh, and that's how we aim uh, this study, which was to effectiveness of home, but not alone. Now, this is something I want to share with you all that why i come up with the title of home but not alone why i just didn't say the effectiveness of a mobile health based educational program so so and so forth because i personally feel that you know home but not alone that's one month that four weeks of our so-called confinement in a home or at a home where we are not allowed to go out even though we are there we feel very lonely because sometimes uh, we we can't like, you know, we have so many restrictions that we have to wear certain things, we have to do certain things. And we used to feel lonely despite of being surrounded by all our loved ones. So that's why I felt that, and I'm talking from my personal experience too, and the mothers I have interviewed. And that's why I wanted to let them know that this app is for you when you're at home, but you won't be alone because she will be, or the app will be your companion. So this was the hypothesis. That means uh, my main uh, import, uh, primary outcome was uh, parenting self-efficacy and the secondary outcomes were social support, parental satisfaction, and of course, depression. And uh, like I said uh, in the beginning, I want to just give you a bit of an idea about the routine care, or the standard care, what happens in Singapore, like the births are in the centers or rather in the hospitals. And we stay in the hospitals between about 12 to 72 hours. And uh, the only follow-up support we have is one to six weeks follow-up appointment. There is no home visits or any other sort of uh, follow-up care in the community for the new parents. And uh, that's why we come up with the home but not alone, this app. And it has certain features which I would like to highlight to you. One of the features is a push notification. So for about a one week period, these parent mothers were receiving uh, notifications telling them your baby is today one day old and you should be expecting this. Today is day two, today is day three. Like day three, four, we were talking about that, you know, your, your hind milk should come in. Day five, we talk about, you know, your baby may be a bit jaundiced, so and so forth. So kind of giving them a little bit of a milestones what are expected in the first uh, one week after delivery. They also had an opportunity to have asynchronous communication. That means they can uh, write questions and which will be answered by a midwife once a day. Plus, they can actually communicate with similar other parents. So they, if they have any questions, they can ask. Though midwife was answering them once a day, but in between, if any other mother knew the answer, she will answer them. So it's kind of becoming an online community among the parents. And of course, we had educational contents and uh, this is uh, just to share with you how the educational content uh, was delivered. And I remember Portria just wrote that it's a cultural shock. I'm going to give you some another cultural shock now, <laughs> which is that uh, though we have uh, PDF files um, available and uh, even the books are written and uh, given to the mothers, but many of them are not allowed to read during the confinement period because they say your eyesight will go weak. 
So that's why that was the reason the same PDF files were then converted to audio files. So what mothers will do like we all are doing now, they will put up a microphone and the same content they will listen. Right. So that was the reason of having audio files for them. It's basically just replica of PDF files. Everything, whatever we have, like on baby care, newborn care, whatever the five, six topics we covered, everything was delivered both in a written as well as in audio forms. Now the videos, nothing new. I didn't uh, reinvent the wheel that by saying that my videos were something which nobody has covered. Honestly, the videos were just simple. Thank you, Sherry, for uh, for, for, for your acknowledgement, yes. And for the videos, what we did was we actually come up with the topics on like baby bathing, breastfeeding, changing diapers, so and so forth. Now, the reason of coming up with these videos, you must be thinking, why are you surely wasting your time and energy and money in creating those videos? Why didn't you take those videos which are so fabulous, available free of charge online? This was based on my interviews, qualitative, descriptive, qualitative interviews I did with the mothers and they found that many videos are available. However, there are few reasons. One, uh, most of the videos are developed in the West. So as you can see from my accent, it's not as beautiful as what Linda has. So they wanted to relate to someone Asian accent so that they can uh, understand them well and especially uh, uh, more I would say a singlish accent because we like to say words like okay la I think everything will be fine la you know so people wanted to relate to something very localized so we wanted to contextualize those videos and at the same time we also wanted to show local babies and uh, so that the parents can relate to them and very strangely or rather uh, that's something amused me was when I did interviews they say yes the videos are very good but how we know those videos are good we have to go through 50 to 100 of those comment session to see how people are commenting upon those videos in YouTube so that they can realize themselves that whether that video is good or not you know so that's the reason they wanted uh, having a video from professionals like us in that uh, oh, app so this is just a dummy of the app how it appeared uh, so this is a uh, uh, so called the online the, the first screen session and then the query sessions then content was like this video pdf and audio and then of course uh, push notifications as well as the messages parents were receiving so <clears throat> the content which I was mentioning to you this is the book I wrote in 2012 for my previous study where I did home visits and of course we we kind of I would say enhance the content and that but particular topics in that book was question, uh, topics like on breastfeeding, uh, on baby care, so and so forth. I think the new things which I added in this uh, mobile health app was uh, role of fathers. Because we felt from our previous research that our focus always remain on mother and baby. And fathers are somebody who felt left out. And I just want to, and I always share this with everybody whenever I present anything about perinatal care, my research, that local fathers... They share things like people see us like a lamppost. People see us like a bystander. And they feel that it is uh, very strange that the whole focus remain on mother and baby. And when I'm in the room, same room when a nurse or a midwife come to educate my wife, we are always so-called not paid attention to. So imagine that is something our local fathers were saying. So that's why I felt it's very important we can share that how fathers can support to the mothers. And yes, Portia, I, uh, thank you very much. That uh, it's, it's a challenge when you have a non contextualized videos. And yes, you need some money, write a grant proposal. If you need any help with me, I, want to, I will say this at the end of the day, that I would be happy that this, uh, uh, this so-called mobile health app, which I have developed, it can be tested in many other countries and I'll be more than happy if you have any information uh, to ask about. And uh, this was one of the screenshots from the video, but this, this was me a few years, um, I mean last year, my hairstyle was a bit different. So anyway, uh, this is uh, my introductory video and then I have given them video on uh, baby bathing and we have on breastfeeding, so and so forth. So these are some of the screenshots from those uh, videos. Now. We didn't just cover with the, whatever the educational program that one day we did a literature or we hear from the mothers and we were done with it. In order for us to have a buy-in from our clinical partners, we wanted to have our so-called educational program are standardized as well as uh, evidence-based. So that's why we come up with a protocol and that was endorsed by a professor in psychoeducation, pediatric nursing, senior consultant was on board, of course, midwives, me and one of my other colleagues. And we also bring lay mothers in to hear from them what they feel about that educational booklet. So we kind of pilot tested it. And uh, 
Of course, coming back to the technicalities, this study was a randomized controlled two-group uh, pre-test and post-test trial. And we tested on the participants from one of the public hospitals. It's a single center uh, trial. And uh, we don't, didn't just want to have a randomized control trial. We also wanted to hear from the parents how they feel about it. So we did a qualitative interviews on that. This was the inclusion exclusion criteria. I'm mindful of the time. I'm sure Linda going to tell me soon, Shafali, you are taking a lot of time. So hurry up. Uh, just to let you know, inclusion criteria, it was all helpful healthy parents with the healthy babies uh, something to could be strange to many of you that why the age is 21 and not 18 because in Singapore the legal age is 21 again probably cultural shock to many of you and the focus was on first time as well as experienced parents able to speak English and those who are gonna stay and use this app in the next uh, four weeks and we estimated sample size based on cohort and uh, medium size effect. We needed about 100 couples and eventually 125 couples total, 250 subjects participated in this study. And at the end of the randomized control trial, I also did the interviews with the parents uh, to understand from them qualitatively how they feel about this uh, intervention or rather app and 15 of them were invited. So these are the outcome measures. These are different tools we use like parenting, self-efficacy, social support, depression, which was measured by Edinburgh postnatal depression scale and parenting satisfaction all these tools have been locally validated and tested for their reliability and validity and uh, like i said we use the randomized control trial so parents were randomized into uh, oh slow down sorry sheila some echo which makes it difficult to pick up okay i'm sorry dear okay let me slow down so data was collected uh, from a single uh, public hospital and uh, we randomly assigned parents and uh, they, they also need to have a gadget. We didn't give them free uh, handphones or whatever. So one of the inclusion criteria was that they, they must own a smartphone so that they can download the app. And uh, also uh, parents in the control group, they didn't receive the intervention, but they receive, uh, oh, thank you, Linda, uh, to receive the routine care. And of course, the intervention was delivered for a week. That means all the parents were given an access to this app for one month. I hope my speed is okay now. All right. And of course, we get the ethics approval and uh, informed written consent was taken. Thanks, Linda. And we analyze the data using advanced statistics. We actually use linear mixed model. If those who are doing PhD or those who are new to statistics, just to let you know that... Uh, if you see, it's a two-group test study, uh, and because it has few outcome measures, you can actually use ENCOVA or MENCOVA. But because it's a couple study, and we know as a couple, they are not just one entity. One of them can affect the other. So this is something I learned from a statistician that we have to have linear mixed model so that we can so-called statistically control the influence of each parent on each other as one participant. Yeah. And uh, this is a consort diagram. We assessed for eligibility about 360 couples. Eventually, 251 were approached and we randomized 125 couples. And then they were randomized into intervention and control group. Eventually, we have some follow, uh, sorry, attrition rate, which was within 11%. We had 50 couples at the end of one month stayed with us who used the intervention and uh, two fathers and one mother. See how strange it is. We never just lose the entire Kind of a couple diet itself we have 50 couples but sometimes we like for example we lose two mothers but we uh, or father so we have even father or mother still stayed with us all the way until end and of course in control group we had 53 couples and those for publications those who write papers you will know that uh, uh, for us those who do rcts we must have an intention to treat analysis which is a gold standard uh, before we can analyze the data and uh, these are the results from my demographics. Uh, just a quick one. Our age was about 30 to uh, 33. That was a kind of our demographic age in the parents who are giving birth to their first to second child. And uh, major ethnicity was Chinese. Again, this is according to Singapore's demographic profile. Our major ethnicity is Chinese followed by Malay and Indian. So what I want to show uh, share here is that even though it was a single center study, but the representation was something like our our local demographic data. But uh, most of the parents were from uh, university degree. So that means it was uh, the kind of the hospital where I did my study. Uh, most of the parents who visit there was uh, those who were better educated. And of course, a normal delivery was the main uh, 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 form of delivery or mode of delivery. And uh, 
Just a quick one, I won't go into the technical details here, that for all the outcome variables from self-efficacy, social support, and the social support we divided into two because this scale, it measures social support from loved ones as well as from the hospital people or other healthcare professionals. Postnatal depression and satisfaction. For each and every scale, we had positive p-value. That means statistical significant value except for the PND, which I share with you why we ended up having no so-called effect, uh, statistical significant effect on PND. Then we also did the analysis that the previous analysis was on a parent as a diet, yeah, as a group of parents. And then we also did for mothers and we also did for fathers. And for all we find out, same as for parents, that there was a statistical, statistical significant difference between self-efficacy, social support, and satisfaction except for the depression so i also did like i said interviews with the parents to find out from them and we did a thematic analysis on our interviews the interviews lasted about 30 to about 60 minutes and uh, we hear from them what they found was so-called strengths or weaknesses of this app and uh, they found a lot of positive features in the app like they found the information content was good they find like this audio video and push notification things and they say it was easy to access they love the advice from the midwife and especially they felt that the midwife was very upbeat and providing them reassurances and all that and they found there was somebody there to help them with the prompt availability and uh, they felt that the experiences they gained more it was like a friend to them i would like to share with you one uh, information uh, one of which i have also put in this quote in my paper which is published in midwifery that uh, one of the mothers said that because at night she will be the only one who will wake up to breastfeed her baby and uh, she feels that at that time she will feel that she's alone she wants to talk to someone so she will go into the app and look at the questions or the queries asked by the parents then she will scroll through it whatever happened in the daytime so she said it was like a friend the app was like a friend to her i thought that was very beautiful to hear from someone and uh, they felt that it helped to enhance their confidence so and so forth and of course they gave some recommendation because we had some technical hiccups and all that so uh, I'm just finishing my slides and in, the, in these few slides uh, with the discussion that we felt that one of the reason I felt that the, the study work was uh, I'm, I'm relating it to Bandura self-efficacy theory. According to Bandura, there are four main factors which enhances someone's self-efficacy. And one of the first factor is uh, mastery experience. That means if you give someone an experience of performing a task, they with practice then will be able to perform it better each time. It's the same thing like when we present first time, we are hesitant, we are scared, so and so forth. The more with practice become more confident. So something like this is called mastery experiences. And we felt that our our instructional videos, our so-called knowledge content and all that, it helped them that uh, all these things will be the part of uh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, building up their confidence and they were also able to hear from other similar others people for example uh, other mothers who were able to do things and sometimes some mothers ask questions then they feel oh they are not alone because other mothers are also asking the same questions so they felt that you know a kind of a vicarious uh, uh, experience from others similar others they also receive verbal persuasions from the parents for example if a, a woman is uh, doing something midwife will tell her this is the right way blah and blah and at the same time, other parents were chipping in and saying that I do the same way too. So that kind of gave them assurance that they are not alone when they're doing certain things. And of course, people were able to exchange their experiences. Thank you. Yes, Portra is exactly like a companionship. And of course, push notifications, it was giving them a milestones. Because like I said, they don't have any continuity of care. They have no midwife coming to their house and telling them that, you know, this is something expected. Simple thing, when baby hiccups, they all panic. So in our milestones, when we write down and send them a message, it's okay if your baby is showing some hiccups and all this, a normal process, they felt reassured, you know, and uh, with those automated messages. And of course, they felt the kind of a virtual community, like they had, like I say, like a friend, they were able to relate to others, they were able to feel that they're not alone. Exactly what was the main aim of my, my app, home but not alone, right? So they were able to have some social interactions and that 
help them to reduce a little bit of their stress and anxiety. Now, here I would like to highlight the you. Yeah, yes, it helped them to have enhanced self-efficacy, social support. They were very satisfied as parents. They feel good. But somehow, even though I don't have a statistical significant uh, difference in depression, which is very, very, I think, uh, relatable, reason being you all are advised, I'm sure you've been reading a literature on that, that I did a follow-up, that means post-test data collection, one month after delivery. And if we want to understand depression, we have to do a follow-up data collection longitudinally, at least three months to six months, because that is the time depression shows its signs. So that's why we felt that, um, that you know, uh, in our next study, which I'm doing now, that I have to have a longitudinal follow-up data collection. So like I said, they felt that they, they are able to solve their problems. The solutions to the problems were given. They had a higher satisfaction, uh, self-efficacy, and that lead to their better parenting satisfaction. And like I said earlier, PND didn't show, depression didn't show uh, any statistical signal difference. One of the reasons is because the data was finished only at baseline and four weeks. So one month, uh, three months data collection was something which uh, literature has shown that they uh, started showing some signs. And that's why my new research, what I'm doing now with parents, we are doing longitudinal data collection. So some of the strengths of the study, the reason why the study, uh, it worked, because we use theoretical framework based on Bandura self-efficacy theory. We use valid and reliable instruments. Sample size was adequate. We had internal validity of the study. We had a group of people who actually like experts as well as novice who endorsed the content of the of, of this app. And also we use intention to treat analysis, which is kind of a statistical stuff. But we do have limitations in this study. First, it was just a single center study and we only focus on English speaking parents, which which could be, uh, you know, I'm not sure whether you're able to relate. Like I said earlier, we have multiracial society and uh, uh, generally people like to speak Chinese. And, uh, and at the same time, they were able to, uh, they, they also speak uh, Indian, they also speak, uh, we call it Tamil and Malay. So that's why we feel that, you know, the content should reach to all the parents in different languages. So hopefully in future, we, we can do that. I, I will give you the answer uh, and I'll analyze soon what are those instruments. And then a process evaluation from intervention group was done. Uh, it should be good to do it from both intervention and control group so that we can also hear from control group that what they're actually lacking and study was not blinded. And before I share with you implications for future research, uh, maybe I share about the instruments since you have asked. Uh, yes, five minutes. I'll be able to uh, finish it up, Linda. Uh, for parenting self-efficacy, we use a parenting self-efficacy scale. For the development, uh, for social support, we measure, uh, we measure, we use, sorry, uh, parenting social support scale. For depression, we use Edinburgh postnatal depression scale. And for parenting satisfaction, we use uh, what being the parent of a baby like WBPL scale. So this is all mentioned in my publications. I will share in my next few slides soon and uh, you'll be able to find that more. So implication for research, which is the future research should evaluate the intervention on diverse population, and we should blind the study and most importantly, test the cost effectiveness of the study so that we can tell the policymakers that please help us or rather support us to have mobile health app for the parents. And of course, nurses and midwife, midwives, they, will, they, can, they should be able to uh, and integrate in the technology in the, in the uh, early postpartum period. And uh, we should focus on family-centered educational programs, not just focusing on baby and mothers. And uh, these are the publications. I will spend a little bit of a time on this. Uh, papers have been published in Journal of Advanced Nursing and uh, Journal of Advanced Nursing, Journal of Advanced Nursing, Journal of Child and Family Studies. And uh, this is uh, JMIR, which is uh, Journal of Medicine and International Research. So all these papers have been published in there. We also get a fair bit of uh, um, kind of a recognition. We got a media coverage for this app. We were in the newspapers. Uh, our local newspaper where, uh, you know, uh, because parents, they actually wrote to the, uh, the, the community uh, the leaders that, you know, they are benefiting from this app and uh, we wish that we can get more support for this app. So with this, I would like to end my presentation. You guys have been awesome with all your queries coming in. I really enjoy uh, sharing this session. I would like to have uh, Q&A now formally. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. This is my email address. Please send me an email. I can send you the copy of my research and I really hope that I can test this app in many other countries. So over to you, Linda, and uh, I am looking forward to the questions. Please put the slide back with the publication. So, okay, sure. 
Hazel, if you can write me an email, I can send you all the papers because I'm not sure whether you will have an access to all the papers. I might take you up on that one, Shafali. This is a fabulous study and it's a very good um, thought for your particular culture. Well done. Linda, I'm not able to hear you well, Linda. Hello? We could hear you, Linda, but you were not so loud. So could you? Yes, turn now on? I can hear. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me now then? Yes, we can. Oh, yes, we can. This happened at the last one and I thought, oh, why is that happening? That was a fabulous presentation, Shafali. Very interesting. And you know, this is something that we probably could use in other countries where we do do postnatal care because, uh, for example, in the UK, we've always called postnatal care the Cinderella of the services because we don't have enough people to go and visit our women um, often enough and for long enough to support them. Um, uh, something like this may well be worth using, um, although I can imagine a lot of people would say that's not what midwives are about, but still. So questions. What questions we have? Valid instrument. What is a valid instrument is one of them. Thank you, Sherry and Megan. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think that'd be great that if we can work together. I'm going to bring in also the slide for the valid instruments. I know I rushed through that. The instrument details are on that slide. I'm going to bring that. But uh, at the same time, like you said in USA, uh, that if the follow-up is, even though there is a follow-up, I think we need more interactive and detailed follow-up with the parents. And I'll be very happy to share the details of this app. In fact, there are a few people who are interested after my publication. And I think that'd be great that we can test it over uh, different populations. So these are the, these are the, you can take a picture. These are the uh, uh, instruments. Parenting efficacy scale by Lurks and Krokenberg. Social Support Scale by Lux, Postnatal Depression, Edinburgh by Cox, and Parenting Satisfaction, What Being the Parent of a Baby Like by Priyadam. So these, uh, you can take a picture. These are all instruments which I have used and it has been validated in our local context too. Can you still hear me? I'll turn myself up a bit. Am I too loud now? No problem. And Megan, is, is there any way the community that is developed between the family continue after? Oh, yes. Uh, Megan. Hello. Yeah. So I think that's a very good question you have asked, Megan. Sadly, because the contact was given to the parents just for a month and they were able to communicate through the app and the access was cut off after one month. However, reason being because I have funds only to... Do you know, it's, it's not just... It's, of course, it's expensive to develop an app, but it's also you need a money to sustain the app. Okay, so I, I didn't have funds to sustain the app beyond one month because it was just a research study. That's the reason in my implications, I have written that if policymakers can help us to fund such things and they see the need that these kind of apps are helpful, I'm bringing into my implication slides just in case you're worried why I'm jumping on my slides. I feel that if we can pay the money or hospitals can help us to sustain this app, Parents can continue to have this community of, uh, you know, uh, community of so-called uh, uh, friendship or rather, you know, uh, uh, continuous uh, 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 talking or rather a support system with each other. So that's what I meant. Thank you, Sheila. I think one of the questions, can you hear me all right? Yeah. I think one of the questions that comes from there is, um, is there any way that the parents can talk to each other? You know, a bit like... Um, uh, antenatal classes where they develop friendships which continue through the pregnancy, through the labour, through the postpartum, they meet for coffee, they're very supportive. Is there any way that these um, parents can actually talk to each other through the app? Yes, definitely. Uh, these parents, they, they there's a button there where they can do a public talk. That means whatever they write can be like exactly what we are seeing at this uh, big button here, blue button, that you can, everybody can see your, your questions and answer queries or they can do one-to-one -one with each other, which only, for example, I can only speak to Linda and Linda with me so we can have that closer interaction. Like I mentioned earlier in Linda, for this app, it was possible only for a month. So... It, it would be nice that such apps can be sustained for a period of time so that these parents can continue to have that friendship. And when they're actually exchanging so-called personal 
uh, text with each other, they can actually ask each other's number if they want to have that sustained relationship or friendship with each other. So it's very much possible. So do you know if any of them have done this? In fact, Megan has made the point that um, they could perhaps get together and have a Facebook group. Um, yes, that's right. And that's exactly Megan. And uh, that's exactly Lin um, Linda. I'm doing it in my current study. Uh, I've actually uh, gotten some uh, another funds and I'm actually uh, enhancing this app where I'm going to have this uh, uh, so-called the focus group among parents. I'm going to have that uh, uh, that uh, so-called uh, the button or the facility so that they are able to communicate with each other. Before I miss that question, Hazel has asked that how I got that app developed. I'm a true blue midwife. I have no technical information. So I actually, like I said, it was a funded study. So I actually worked with the developers. I paid them money and uh, they helped me to develop this app. That is amazing. And the comments have been made here. We need it for midwifery students too. What do you mean, by that, <laughs> Megan? Megan, do you mean that they need the postpartum advice or do you mean that a similar app for supporting students? For education, probably. Yeah. You could actually take the mic if you wanted to, I think. Oh, I like the interaction aspect of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Anna, Lois. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name well. They need support through their program. I agree with you, Megan. Actually, in fact, uh, yeah, that's true. That We all need that small community so that we can support each other. But uh, I know maybe developing an app could be, could be expensive. Uh, it's not cheap. Uh, I think what we all can do is, I'm not sure uh, in different parts of the world, how we are doing in Singapore is we have this small community called WhatsApp communities. We uh, Some people, I, I was in Japan, they use this um, app called Line. Some in China are using WeChat. So these are the small, uh, these are something which are the free available apps and these can help to support. So I'm not sure Megan uh, in, uh, I remember Megan is from Alaska. I'm not sure in Alaska you have uh, any you know, available app which you all can create your own community and work with. I do think we don't use social media enough. Um, yeah. It's been a bit of a, for a long time, the social media has bit of a, been a bit of a no-no because um, professionally, our professional organizations felt that uh, it was too rife with issues of um, confidentiality and, and whatever um yeah and they're very slow to, to come to realize that actually it's a fab way of getting communication going and anyway all the young people in the world are on social media somewhere or other so we as midwives need to meet them there they won't come to find us they need we need to go there and I yeah think this is more 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 understood now more understood. yeah that's true. I agree with you, Linda. And like you said, you have a closed Facebook group. Yes, you can have such uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Line, WeChat, WhatsApp. Yeah, all these things helps a lot. Uh, in Singapore, that's what our students are doing. So we do need uh, support for each other because um, otherwise it can be very stressful and lonely. <laughs> okay, so I think we need to kind of um, some, uh, close it up now because we're going to close the room in a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, so I will just bring that back to me. Yeah. I can play with your slides. <laughs> Please do. There you go. Um, and quickly go these. Yes, I, I agree. I love all this um, idea of the combination of the education, etc. And culturally specific um, videos, which are very important. 